a very good study tonight. It, it's different from some of the other studies, but we really thought it would be important to include this. The title of the lesson is, The Big Radar Has Caught You. And this time it's really serious. Kind of foreboding title, isn't it? This is dealing with surrender to the Lord and obedience, a very important issue. Some people come to a revelation seminar like this and they think that salvation is in knowing things. Nobody's going to get to heaven because they knew what the mark of the beast was. You know what? The devil knows what the mark of the beast is. It's not going to save him. It is important to know something about how Jesus is come, coming and the imminence of his coming. It's, under, it's, it's important to understand things about the millennium and the chronology there in final events. And it's very refreshing to read through the prophecies and understand them. And you will. But I've done you a great disservice if I give you all that information without stressing the importance of a personal commitment and surrender to your Savior. Because all I'm doing, if I give you information without encouraging you to submit to the Lord of the Bible, I'm creating problems for you in the judgment day. You know why? To whom much is given, much is required. And if you're coming to the meetings just because you were tickled by information but you have no intention of following the Lord, then you probably ought to pack up and get out right now because these things will be glaring at you in the judgment. God will say, you knew this information. To whom much is given, much is required. Even Jesus said, he who knew his master's will and did not do it will be beaten with many stripes. He who did not know his master's will will be beaten with few stripes. And so, friends, it's important for us to not only understand prophecy and revelation, we're going to get into some heavy things. Some of the things I'm going to share are going to be mind-blowing. Some of them are going to be very earth-shaking. Some of them will shake your personal foundations. Some of them will shake things that you've maybe believed for years, misconceptions. And if you do not have a personal commitment to Jesus, then your house will be swept away when the storm comes. That's why at this point, before we go any farther, I am stressing surrender to the Lord. Surrender to the Lord means a willingness to listen to Him and obey Him. Question number one. Does God really see and take note of me personally? Is God aware of each one of us personally? The Bible tells us that God is aware of our down-sittings and our uprisings. He watches over us with a jealous eye. The Lord watches over us because he watches over the flowers that bloom and the sparrows. God is aware of every DNA molecule in every blade of grass, in every field, in every planet throughout the cosmos. Do you think he's not aware of you? Would you be unaware of something you died to redeem? Would you give your life for something that you were not aware of? Oh, you bet he's aware of you. He is intensely interested in you and your life. The very fact you're still breathing, that your heart is beating right now is because God has provided for you through your life and he's taking note of you personally. And he wants a relationship with you personally. You might think, with all the people in the world, does God really care whether I notice him? You know, because God is God and he loves like God, he hurts like God too. He wants you to love him. He does not want to feel rejection. And when, when we ignore God, when we go from day to day and never notice Him, even though He's supplying all of our needs, it hurts Him. It wounds Him. He wants to have a love relationship with each one of us. He made us to be loved and to love us. How do you think a parent feels? Well, I've seen it happen so many times. I'll tell you how they feel. I've got a family, real stubborn, driven people. My mother and her mother fought for nine years and they didn't talk. And every time I'd, I, you know, had to go see grandma, and then I'd come home and see mom, and whenever I'd see grandma, she'd start crying. What's the matter with your mother? How come she doesn't call me? I took care of her. I loved her. She'd start sobbing and crying. It just broke her heart. Nine years wondering. I had this child. I provided for them. I just wanted some love. And I've seen it in earthly relationships. I've seen it in marriages where wives just want a little love and attention from their husbands, but their husbands never notice them. It's typically, it's that way more than the other. How do you think God feels? 
when every day he's providing everything we need, every cell of life is, is activated by God, and we don't think about him but just a couple of passing references in the morning or before we drop off to sleep at night. He wants to walk with us through the day. Amen? He knows you. He's aware of you personally, and he wants you to be aware of him. There's an excellent book I'd like to recommend. It's very old. It's called Practicing the Presence of God. When we can master being aware of God's presence, then you know what it means to abide in Christ. Question number two. Can I be saved in his kingdom without obeying his word as found in the Holy Bible? Not if you know what his word says. Now, I've made it very clear. God judges us according to what we know. This is going to come up later in the lesson, but I want you to turn to a scripture. Turn with me to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. New Testament. Hebrews chapter 10. It's uh, just before the book of Revelation. Actually, a few books before Revelation. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation that shall devour the adversaries. If we sin willfully. Now, is there a difference between willful and unwillful sin? It's saying if we deliberately sin after God has given us a knowledge of the truth, that's pretty dangerous. We're thumbing our noses at God even though he's told us what his will is. And for us to say that he's our Lord when we're not obeying his orders is a sham. The Bible says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? That's what Jesus said. And again, John says, if we say we know him and do not keep his commandments, we're a liar and the truth is not in us. That's the Bible, friends. If you don't want to know the truth, then don't come. But I'm going to tell you what the Bible really says. It's not necessarily popular, but it's the Bible. For us to say, we love the Lord, we know the Lord, and not obey the Lord is hypocrisy. Can I be saved when I deliberately, after I know what his word says, go against his word? No. The Lord tells us in the judgment there will be many. Don't ever forget the words many and few. Jesus said, straight is the gate, narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. Broad is the way and wide is the gate that goes to destruction, and many. Many means majority. The majority of Christian people who take the name of Christ, will come to him in the judgment and say, Lord, Lord, haven't we taught in your streets? Haven't we cast out devils, many, done many wonderful works? And they think uh, this religious behavior is a substitute for personal surrender. And the Lord says, I do not know you. Now, you know when the Lord says he wants to know us, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. The word know in the Bible has a very intimate connotation. The Bible says Adam knew his wife. They had a baby. No represents like marriage. Very close relationship. Very intimate. Very personal. Jesus said he wants to know us. He wants to have a personal relationship with us. And you know what's more? He does want to reproduce. You and him reproduce other Christians. Through your relationship, being filled with his spirit, other Christians are born. He wants to be married to us. We're the bride. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loves the church. That's a very intimate love relationship. And for people to say, oh yeah, I know the Lord, but they're not submitting to the Lord. He says, no, I don't really know you. Number three, why does God require obedience? Why is it necessary? Well, it's because he doesn't want us to have any fun. You know, that's what I said. When I was up there in the cave and I started reading the Bible and I looked at the claims of the gospel, and I want you to keep in mind, friend, Keep in mind, friends, I had never been to church. When I first started reading about Jesus, oh, well, that's not true. I mean, I was forced to go to church in some military schools I went to and things, but I was not a churchgoer. I didn't hear very many sermons. And uh, when I started reading the Bible, just from reading the Bible, I knew there were things in my life that needed changing. And, oh, you should have seen me wrestle. I was smoking, drinking, lying. I was having relationships with young ladies I was not married to, cursing, stealing, doing a lot of things wrong. And I started reading the Bible. I started thinking, oh man, I'll probably have to quit drinking because I knew my drinking was not appropriate. And I thought, I'd like to be a Christian, but I don't want to quit drinking. Christians don't have any fun. So God said, I won't stop you. Drink. God doesn't force us, does he? Well, I kept on drinking, reading my Bible and drinking. 
and I'd wake up in jail and not know how I got there. Or I'd wake up and find out I had wrecked somebody's car in reverse, Jaguar XKE. Or I'd wake up and find out that I had made a fool out of myself. Or I'd wake up and, of course, throw up the whole next day. Or I'd wake up and find out that I'd done something to hurt somebody I cared about. And then I heard a little still, small voice say, Are you having fun? And it started to dawn on me, God, as a loving Father, only wants me to give up what hurts me. God does not want us to give up anything good. I'm going to say that again. Tattoo it inside your brain. God will never ask you to give up anything good. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly, is what the Bible tells us. The only thing he's going to take from you are the things that hurt you because he is a loving Heavenly Father. He wants you to be happy. Look at the Garden of Eden. Everything he gave Adam and Eve was paradise. Good, good, very good. Pleasures at his right hand forevermore. God wants you to have abundant life, real happiness. But sin will not make you happy. And then I read in the Bible, it's not what goes in a man's mouth that defiles him, but it's what comes out of his mouth. I said, oh good, I can keep drinking and smoking. It's not what goes in the mouth that defiles a man. And I knew when I said it that it wasn't true. I was twisting the scripture to satisfy my lusts. And then I noticed that what went in the mouth affected what came out. And when I drank, what went in the mouth affected what came out of the mouth. And when I smoked, my breath tasted like an ashtray. I'd be driving along, I'd drop the head of the cigarette in my lap and nearly kill myself. Spend my last dollar on tobacco when I had nothing to eat because I was an addict. It's pretty pitiful when you're walking down the road, you have no food, you find two dollars and you buy cigarettes with it because you're an addict. It's really, and some people do that with alcohol. And the Lord said, Doug, are you having fun? Little by little, it began to sink in that God wanted me to turn away from the things that hurt me. Now, friends, I've got an announcement. A lot of young people here, this is a university. If you hang around with me when I'm in Sacramento, you cannot keep up with me because I have so much fun. Very few people have as much fun as me. I hit the ground having fun, and I go to sleep exhausted from so much fun at the end of the day. But I don't have a guilty conscience. Christians have an abundant life, a full life. And we do all kinds of fun things. No hangovers, no bad breath. That's the, that's the way it is for the Christian. God only wants you to give up the things that hurt you. That's why he wants you to obey, because he's a loving parent, and the devil's out there to destroy you as a roaring lion. Number four.